We are still continuing with our Safari Engage 2. And uh, last Sunday, by the grace of God, we had Reverend Jesse Mwai taking us through the mountain of arts and entertainment. And the first uh, Sunday, we had our sister Naomi taking us through the mountain of politics and governance. And for those who are there, I know you are blessed. This morning, by the grace of God, we are moving to the third mountain, which is also very, very key. Because if this mountain is taken care of, then other, other mountains will be safe. Because if this mountain is not taken care of, then we might be missing something that is very, very key and important. Let's bow down our heads as we pray together in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, the great I am, we come before you this afternoon with thanksgiving in our hearts. Lord, we want to thank you for giving us an opportunity to come and sit under the ministry of your word. Thank you, Lord, for the time you have had in your presence, singing to you, O God, and even uh, worshiping you through our giving, O God. The time has come. Lord, we are expectant of your word, O God. Bless every, every man, every woman, every every couple that is presented here this afternoon. And Lord, at the end of this service, all praise and honor will come back unto you. We bless you, even as you use me this afternoon. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. For those who are new, my name is uh, Ibrahim Owino Uchien. I love Jesus as Lord and Savior of my life. I'm married to Eunice, Chef Kuri Owino, and we are blessed with three girls, uh, Deborah, Abigail, and uh, Shekinah. The lesson I'm bringing to us is a bit wide, but I'll try to manage it. And that's why we're encouraging us to buy the books so that you can have time to do a follow-up at your own level so that this lesson can be a blessing to you. And I know we are going to be blessed together. So I'm talking about marriage and family as agents of God's kingdom. Before that, I want to read a news here just to prepare us to know why this subject is very, very important. This is a quotation from one of the newspapers from Uganda, independent news. I'll just read some few lines before we continue. The heading is saying, marriage in Uganda is under siege. This is according to Justice Bamamuge Miriaria. She says these words. Justice, I'll just call him B, recalls the time when she joined the family division of I Court in 2013 before moving to Court of Appeal, where she found 50 divorce cases that had been filed. However, this has changed with time as the cases have now tripled. There were 50 back there, but now they have tripled. Delivering a public lecture at Uganda Christian University, UCU in Mac Mukono, under the theme, Christian family in the postmodern era, justice be noted that marriage as understood in the Christian setting was intended to be for one woman and one man. But in this era, women have resorted to having test tubes babies. Unlike in the past years, Justice B says that one of the advanced effects of social media is people constantly looking up to celebrities for advice, and this has put many families on a slippery slope. And last line that he mentioned, which is also key for us to know as we talk about this topic. He says, every error comes with these positive and negative things. We have women getting empowered unlike in the past. And mothers are now working, leaving their children with their nannies 
and television sets, these children will easily take advice from their peers, someone on TV and social media than on their parents' advice. She concludes by saying this, that parents also stop demanding on the government and schools in raising their children, but to go back on the drawing board and sit down as parent with other community members to come up with ways to help raise a good generation. That's a statement, as I was looking at that statement and uh, looking at what is happening, happening all around us, I said this lesson is within the set time. And I'm praying as I bring this message that God will speak to every last one of us. And as I bring this message, I'm not coming to you as a perfect family. I'm still also working on my family to be what God expects it to be. That is my desire and that is my prayer. For the last 20 years I've been in marriage, I feel I'm not yet there. I'm not that, that agent that God wants me to be. And I'm pushing and trusting God to help me and my family to be the agent of God's kingdom in this generation I'm in. So as I talk to you, few things that God has impressed in us through this lesson, I know God is going to bless us. Marriage and family as agents of God's kingdom. I said in the morning, in every kingdom there is a king. And in every kingdom, there are principles and rules that governs that kingdom. And because we are talking about God's kingdom, being agents of God's kingdom, we need to understand that Jesus is the king of that kingdom. And there are certain things that Jesus expects from us as his children. Because there are principles, there are patterns that governs the kingdom of God. And if you are going to be the agents of the kingdom of God, I know we're in a political season. There are people who are agents of various parties and they bow to those parties to the letter. If you are going to be the agent of God's kingdom, there are certain things that are very paramount for you to take note of. That's why this afternoon we are just reminding us the importance of marriage and family in building God's kingdom. Because God will not use animals. God will not use objects to build his kingdom. God will use a man and a woman to build his kingdom. And that's why this lesson is very, very important. There's a question I want you to, to ask yourself, even as we continue. Probably I'll not ask you to discuss but I want you to ask yourself this question. What is your ideal of the perfect family portrait in a family you admire? What is your ideal of the perfect family of a model in a family you admire? You admire? You know, there, 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 there are people you look at. There are families you look at. And sometimes you ask yourself, did I make a mistake or what happened? And there are things that as you look in those families, you say, I wish I could be like this. I wish my children could be like this. I wish my husband, my wife could be like this. What is your idea of the perfect family portrait that you are thinking as we talk about this particular afternoon? We'll be answering two questions that are very, very key. What is the family and what is marriage? And this lesson will speak to all of us. You might be here, you are single, and you're wondering, how will this message speak to me? I want to tell you this message is for all of us. We are all in a family in one way or another one. There is nobody who just came from heaven and fell on earth. We are all in a family. So as we talk about marriage and family, it is important to know that God wants to use your family. God wants to use your marriage to bring glory to his kingdom in the name of the Lord. So we begin by asking ourselves, what is a family? And we have around three definitions of what a family is all about. 
Number one, a family is a basic unit in a society. And this unit consists of parents who are rearing their children. That is a family, a basic unit in a society. We call that a family. Secondly, it is also a spouse or children coming together. You find we have a father, we have a mother, and we have children. We call that family. As I'm standing here, I'm called the family of Owino. Anytime you want to see my family, you say that daughter belongs to the family of Owino. It's a spouse and children coming together. Number three, it is about the clan. All of us here come from a clan. We come from a group of people. There's a place we associate with. That's why when people are marrying, we always ask from which family, from which clan do you come from? So when we talk about family, please take note of that. We are talking about the basic unit. We are talking about a spouse and children. And also we are talking about a clan. How can your clan be used as an agent of God's kingdom? How can your clan be used to propagate the values of the kingdom of God? That is very, very important. Number two question we are asking ourselves, what is marriage? Because this is also very, very important. We live at a time when so many things are happening. A lot of things are taking place. But Christians who are called by the name of God should understand the mind of God and what God probably expects from us. So we are asking ourselves, what is marriage? I want to say this, children of God, as you look at your manual, we have been given around three or four things to help us understand what marriage is all about. But even as I talk about what marriage is, we need to know that God wants us to put him as the center of everything that we are doing. In our marriage, in our family, God expects us to put him at the center. He expects every marriage, he expects every family to glorify his name in everything that they are doing because that is very, very important. And as you are seated here this afternoon, even as I'm talking, you need to ask yourself, is God at the center of our marriage? Is God at the center of our family? Or other things are at the center? That when you have to do something, you have to consult some other people. If you want to do this, before even thinking about God, you are thinking about those old people that you, you consult back at home. Anybody who wants to fulfill the agenda of God's kingdom should make sure that God is at the center. And whatever we are doing should glorify the name of the Lord. Somebody say amen. Now I want to challenge us, my brothers and sisters, in this season we are living in, let us allow God in our relationship, in our marriages, in our families, let us allow him to be there at the center. Because when God is present, you are sure that things will still work out for the good of the people who have allowed him to do that way. So we are told marriage is the state of being united as spouses in a consensual and a contractual relationship recognized by the law. If it is recognized by the law, as long as it is unity of two opposite sex that becomes marriage. It is also the mutual relationship of married person through wedlock. There are people who come and wed in church or even at the AG's office. That becomes marriage. The institution where a man and a woman are joined in a marriage. It can be a Christian wedding, an AG's wedding, or even a traditional wedding. That still becomes a marriage. It is also an act of marrying or the right by which the marriage status is effected especially through the wedding ceremony and attended festival or formalities where you find somebody goes, pays dowries and all those kind of things. 
that still becomes a marriage in the larger context. Marriage is also an intimate or close union. When you are intimate or you have a close union with somebody, that is referred to as marriage. No wonder if you have an habit of just moving around with uh, A, B, C, D here and there, you're making a very big blunder. Because when you are intimate with somebody, that is referred as marriage. And many times people don't take that very seriously. And that's why we are seeing marriage to be under siege, under siege which is very, very dangerous. And I want to pray as we continue that as I bring this word to us, that God will speak to every last one of us. The second question we are asking ourselves, how did marriage and family begin? Because it didn't come out by osmosis. There's a source where marriage began from. And when we know where marriage began from, we'll always want to refer to the manual where marriage began from. Today I know we have Business Trade Expo. If you go to those stands, they'll be giving you some manual to refer to the businesses they are doing. But also as Christians, when you want to look at marriage, you need to go back to the manual, which is the word of God. Somebody say amen. This is the only manual we can give you, by the way. If your marriage is not working, we'll tell you, can you go back to the word of God? If your marriage has issues, we'll tell you, can you go back to the word of God? Because marriage began from somewhere. Marriage has got his own author. And we are told the author of marriage is God himself. God initiated every marriage and every family relationship. Somebody say amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. When you enter into marriage, just know that the initiator is God in heaven. Not your parents. They can be involved in helping you to get your spouse. Not even your pastors. They can be involved to get, to, to get the spouse. But the initiator, the author of marriage and family is God himself. And that's why he's looking for families and marriages that can be agents of God's kingdom. People can propagate the kingdom of God. Genesis 1.27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And God said it is not good for man to be alone. God knew very well that loneliness is a loophole for the enemy. Loneliness is a dangerous place to be. Loneliness is not a good thing for any man because the author himself is saying it is not good for a man to be alone. So if the author is saying it's not good for a man to be alone, who am I? Not to hear his mind concerning what he's talking about. So as we talk about the originator of marriage, it is God himself. We have this question, what is the role of marriage and family in God's kingdom agenda? How I pray, Sita Meldoret, that God raise men and women, families, single parents, who know their roles in the kingdom of God. Who knows what God is expecting of them in the kingdom agenda. Because God has a business that he desires to see every of us accomplish. And uh, we are given a few things here that I want to mention. One of the role is to propagate God's kingdom agenda through the multiplication of faith. Values. Values are very key things. There is no institution you will go and find them operating without values. Even as Sita Melloret or Sita as a ministry, we have some values that we cherish very much. And in the family setup, it is important for us to propagate God's kingdom agenda through the multiplication of faith values. What are these faith values? Prayer is a faith value. Our children should know why they are praying. Giving, for example, faithful in the house of the Lord is a faith value. 
Your child should know why you are giving 10% every other time. Why you are giving offering in the church. That is a faith value. Sharing the word of God in your house with your family is a faith value. It's something that we need to cherish. That apart from what we are doing, as a family we believe in this value of reading the word of God together. Because when that happens, we are saying we are propagating God's kingdom agenda through the multiplication of faith value. Somebody say amen. Because that is very important. As long as people are busy, we should not be too busy to the expense of forgetting the part of multiplying the value of faith in our families. Because that is what God expects of us. In your busy schedule, can you have one hour with your children, with your spouse, with your clan, and tell them, yes, I know this is Christmas. Can we hear what God is saying? You are propagating the multiplication of faith values. God bless them and say to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the heart, subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. The second reason of the role of marriage and family is companionship. This is not a new vocabulary between husband and wife. Why people probably marry? Why children belong to a family? is because of companionship. Children need their parents. Parents need their children. Wives need their husbands. And husbands need their wives. It's for companionship which I believe is something very clear and also very, very important. Another thing is procreation and the propagation of godly offspring. That is one of the role that we need to procreate and we need to propagate godly offspring that when you are gone, those who have remained after you will say, because of the faith of my mother, because of the faith of my grandmother, today I'm what I am in the name of the Lord. So our role in the kingdom agenda is procreation. Every other month, we dedicate children in this place that we have delivered. But we need to help them also to grow in that line because that is very, very important. Because if we miss that, we are missing the mind of God. We are missing what God expects from us because God wants us to propagate a godly offspring. Let me ask you this question. How will you feel that you have been in church for 40 years and then when you are gone, all your children are outside there doing funny things? Drugs, this and that. They are the thieves known in the town. It is not something that anybody will want to see. We have the opportunity to change the course of things as we move forward. That with the children God is giving us, we can propagate that godly offspring by just making them to know what God expects of us as we move forward. The Bible says, God bless them and say to them, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it. In simple terminology, God wants you to subdue wherever you are, in your home, in your business place, in your place of work, in a church like this. God's expectation is that we should fill the earth and subdue it. We need to take authority. We need to take dominion in every sphere of our lives where we find ourselves. And when we do this, God will bless us. Somebody say amen. Some examples in the Bible of people God used to establish his kingdom. And as I'm reading these examples, probably you can ask yourself, if God is walking around here this afternoon and looking at your family, can he quote you somewhere and say, sit and elderate, there's a family I'm using to establish my kingdom agenda. This number that is here this afternoon, if God just passes here because God is here now, just begin to go around looking at your families. Can you find that family in you? People are saying, God, I want 
to establish your kingdom agenda in my generation. We are told of a number of people in the Bible. We are told of the family of Noah. Many of us know that story. And I'll encourage you to read more about Noah and see what happened with Noah. We have Abraham, the man of faith. He was also used by God to establish the kingdom agenda. We have Jacob, who is also called Israel. Jacob was also used by God to establish the kingdom agenda. We have the Levites or the Levites, men and uh, men of God who are used by God at their own time to establish the kingdom of God. There are things they were doing. And that's why I'm calling upon us. If you get time, go and do a study on Noah and see what are those things that Noah did that established the kingdom agenda. What are those things that Abraham did that established the kingdom agenda and the rest that we are mentioning because that is very, very important. We have the family of David, a man after God's own heart, a man who was open to God and God calls him my friend because of establishing the kingdom of God. We have the father and the mother of Jesus, the family of Mary and Joseph. Through them, our Savior came into the world. And today, we are where we are because of this family. Now encourage us, children of God, because I don't know your family. And I don't know how God is going to use your family to establish his kingdom agenda. The implication this afternoon is that God desires that every marriage and family will resolve to live out their lives as they cautiously serve his plans and purposes to shine God's light in a dark world. We are living in a very dark world and we should purpose in our hearts that in this dark world, I'm going to be used of God to establish his kingdom agenda. Somebody say amen. God's kingdom agenda is very clear. That all of us go to heaven. Nobody should go to hell. And we should pray over that every other time. You know, sometimes I think aloud that now I found myself in heaven. My wife in hell. My mother in hell. My father in heaven. I want all of us to be somewhere in heaven. That is my desire. And that's why every opportunity... You get or I get. We should be establishing the kingdom agenda. Telling people the mind of God and what God expects of them. Somebody say amen. There's this family in the Bible. We have all read about this, this story. The story of Joshua. I'll just read the last line. This man of God reached a place and told the people, guys, it is not business as usual. I have decided, me and my family, we will serve the Lord. I don't care about you, but me and my family, we are going to serve the Lord. Do I have people in the house who are saying they are going to serve the Lord? Praise the Lord. You are saying, I don't care what is happening around me. I don't care. The names have been given. But one thing I want to do with my family, I want to serve the Lord. Somebody say amen. Because that is the heartbeat of God, that we serve him. We serve his purposes. We serve his plans. God has a plan, very well articulated. God has clear purposes for families and marriages, and we should look into that. The next point is very critical. Now, trusting God to help us have understanding, because this is the area that many people are fighting with. Many marriages, many families are fighting with this area we are now going to look at. Because people want to do good things. People want to serve God. People want to be in the plan of God and do the purposes of God. But there are some hindrances that are hindering men and women not to do that which God has called them. Now will take us through them one by one and then see what God will do with us. Number one hindrance is over emphasis. 
on the raising of biological offspring. Over emphasis, over emphasis on raising of biological offspring. I told the people in the morning that I'm blessed with three girls and I'm satisfied. I'm not looking for a boy. And I don't want to push my wife to get me a boy. The three are enough for me. I know families whereby if a wife doesn't get a boy, it is like a taboo. I know families if a woman doesn't deliver, it's a taboo. But the Bible is saying children are a reward from him. A reward is anything you can receive. It's a gift. The owner can decide to give you or deny you. And when you receive, you tell God, thank you for giving me these children. Somebody say amen. Another hindrance is extramarital affairs and relationship. This is killing so many homes today. As your pastor, let me say this. A woman is a woman. A man is a man. Do you hear what I'm saying? Simuniambia, yes. A woman is what? A man is a? And I wonder why people want to engage in extramarital affairs and relationship. Sometimes I wonder. The Bible says, you should not commit adultery. That is the word of God. And in Hebrews 13, 4, the Bible says, marriage should be honored by all. The marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexual immoral. Extramarital affairs make you not to accomplish the agenda that God has for his kingdom. And I encourage every last one of us to trust God that we live a pure life, a holy life, a life of righteousness. Somebody say amen. Divorce and remarriage. It is a norm from what I've just read from us. It is like divorce and remarriage has become a norm. Even you see pastors nowadays divorcing tomorrow you hear a pastor marrying. And you wonder... You know, if he was a member, he could have said, Sour Pengine, but for a man of God, you wonder. The Bible is clear. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven, Sammy. So guard your heart. Do not be unfaithful to your wife. That is the scripture. That is the word of God. Divorce is not a solution. Remarriage is not a solution. Solution is to go back to the manual and ask yourself, where did I go wrong? What did I not do right? Because when you go back to the manual, you'll get the mind of God. And when you get the mind of God, you'll want to flow with what God expects of you. Somebody say amen. Pressures and interference by third parties. This is another thing that hinders many people. Many families, many marriages, not to establish the kingdom of God. That part is, we Luos do things like this. We Kikuyus do things like this. We Nandis do things like this. Let me tell you, child of God, if you are born again, you are born again. And you need to live within your line that God has called you to live in. Somebody say amen. I've seen mothers-in-laws and fathers-in-laws who give their children pressure and interference for no good reason. Once, if you're here and you're a mother-in-law or a father-in-law, once you have released your children, please pray for them. Don't interfere with them. Don't interfere with their life. Don't pressurize them. Pray for them that God will bless them. Somebody say amen. Because when you do that, you'll also give them the freedom to grow. And as they grow, there will be a blessing to you. But when you interfere with them, you pressurize them. Every time you want to call, not because you are encouraging them, but you are calling to quarrel and ask some very funny things. That doesn't glorify God. You'll kill the spirit in your children. 
that God has put in them to make things move in the right direction. I know there are people who like visiting. It is not bad to visit, even your sister or your brother, but please don't overstay your visit. If you go visiting, it's good also to say, my brother and my sister will be here for one month. Don't stay there for two years, you're doing nothing, you're just seated. You'll bring issue in that family. Because you're a third party, you're a statistic in that family. You need to allow that family to grow. When they grow, it becomes a blessing. But I've seen guys, jama, nothing. He didn't come for studies. He's just there. Morning to evening, just watching television. And now he or she becomes the KBC of that house. Any room of mongering in the house comes from that person. And that's very dangerous because this can hinder the, 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 the families to do what they want to do. I don't say that we don't open our doors to our relatives, but let us also have some caution or cushion or caution because that will bless. Somebody say amen. Husbands, are you in the house? When you become so much domineering, you can hinder the establishment of the kingdom of God. There are some husbands who believe they are everything. The only person who is everything is God. Without God, we are nothing. And we should not be dominating in our houses. We should offer priesthood guidance as husbands. Your children should see you praying for them, praying for your wife, praying for your extended family. Your children should see that. What your family needs is leadership, not dominating. You know, there are those men who nasema ni mesema, ni mesema. But who nasema na kusema, but not giving direction what needs to be done. As a leader in the house, you should give leadership. And that's what God is calling us to do. So I implore men who are in the house. Men, are you in the house? Please be a priest in your house. Please be a, real, a leader in your house. Even if your, has, your wife earns more than you, please give leadership in your house. Because that is the state God has placed you. Usianze kunja mkia, unasema mke wangu ndiyo kila kitu kwa nyumba. No. You need to give leadership in that house because you are the head of that house. Somebody say amen. Women, are you in the house? It is said that you are very manipulative. I don't know how you women are manipulative. But if you become a manipulative wife, a wife who does not want to submit, you are killing your family. You are killing your marriage. There are women, I don't know, wali toka kwa moon, ama wali toka kwa star. They cannot submit. Submit simply means you recognize the other authority. Yes, you have everything. You are educated. You have money. You come from this rich family. You have all it takes. But because you have somebody above you, you submit. And submission, sio kuwa mpole, it's an hard thing. It is something from the heart that you respect your husband. You submit to him. In the Lord. The word there is in the Lord, not outside of the Lord, as is fitting to the Lord. What I'm trying to say this is this women. Let us submit to our husbands. Akikwambia uruke, ruka tu. Utabarikiwa. That's what I'm saying. As simple as that. But if he tells you to go and buy him a cigarette, tell him, my husband, I love you. But that is not fitting to the Lord. There are things that fit to the Lord. There are things that doesn't fit to the Lord. So there are things when your husband speaks, you need to submit. And as you submit, God also works in that marriage in a powerful way. Somebody say amen. And resolve conflicts and lack of forgiveness in family. Many families today, to be very honest, the reason why we are not talking in the house, the reason why people are not talking in the house, the reason why you have taken one full month without talking in that house. In the morning you wake, you take your car, the other one take his car, and you go your own ways. It's because of unresolved conflicts. You don't want to sit and say, where is the problem? 
Where did rain began beating us? How can we resolve that issue? How can we sit and say, please, I'm sorry, forgive me for what happened. And resolve conflicts and lack of forgiveness in family is causing a lot of danger. Negative and prohibitive cultural practices. I don't want to repeat on this. Pastor Jesse spoke on this at length last Sunday. Since you died with Christ to the basic principle of this world, why as though you still belong to it, do you submit to his rules? Negative and prohibitive cultural practices when it comes to marriage, when it comes to bereavements, when it comes to childbearing, there are certain things that are hindering the extension of the kingdom agenda. And I pray in Sita Meloret we'll have the true Christians who are living as per the values and the gospel that God himself is giving us. Alternative and unnatural, unnatural lifestyle. <laughs> the Bible says something here very powerful. Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. And these are things that are happening. There are even a group that is pushing for this kabisa. When I say, there's nothing wrong with this. We need to have our men being wedded in church, man to man. Ladies to ladies being wedded to church. But the Bible is saying, do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. A woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relationship with it. That is perversion. I even wonder how it can happen. It is beyond imagination. But the Bible is saying that is perversion. Do not defile yourself in any way. Because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. When we are defiled, we are killing the agenda that God has for the nations. When we are defiled, we are killing the mind and the purpose of God. What is the implication of these few things I've mentioned? People engage in godly practices many times out of ignorance. Thank God you're in a place like this. Where are you here teaching every other Sunday? You hear talks every other day. You don't have any excuse of doing what you are doing. You need to do what the Bible is requiring from you. Somebody say amen. But every child of God must make a clear commitment to attend church regularly. Don't just be coming to church once in a month or once in a year. Make it a regular culture in your life that me and my family, me and my clan, because in your house there are people who come to visit you, you should not leave them at home. Come together with them because that's the way, only way you will help them to connect with what God is doing in their life. And when that happens, that also becomes a blessing. In conclusion, we want to look at what can we do as ambassadors of God's kingdom to alleviate these hindrances? Because probably you're asking, Pastor, these things, I don't know how I'm going to remove them. I don't know how I'm going to work on them. But You've been given some direction here. Number one, we need to recognize that marriage is a covenant relationship with the Almighty God. It's not a contract. It's a covenant. I always tell people when I wed them, I tell them you're not doing a wedding. We are welding you because you're there to stay. No mind of wanting to say I'll move on when things are not working. You have to be there until death do you part? That's how serious it is. So we need to know that marriage is a covenant relationship. Somebody say amen. There's this beautiful scripture in Malachi. Allow me to read it. Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accept them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful. A serious thing. A serious thing. For any serious child of God. That if we break 
the witness that we made, it becomes so tough. And I encourage us with all humility, we need to know that marriage is a covenant. Secondly, believers should not marry non-believers. This is the Bible. This is not Pastor Ibrahim. This is the word of God. That believers should not marry non-believers. You might end up marrying, marrying a, witch, a witch lady. You're wondering, what is happening? So you need to be very careful of you, who you marry. And that's why I was saying in the first service, young ladies who are here and young men, please, before you marry, get advice from these elderly people. Get a pastor. Get a couple that you admire. Let them talk to you. Let them check on this man or this lady because they will know and give you some advice. Then just, naanza upendo kule inje, we are just called for the wedding. And nobody knows, the parents don't know this person, the church doesn't know this person. I tell you, it is a dangerous thing. No wonder we wed people after three months, they say, Pastor, me, I'm divorcing. Because we miss somewhere. But I'm encouraging us. The Bible is saying, believers should not marry non-believers. Establish family time. And family altar. This is something that has been spoken over and over. That as families, we should have family time. I don't need to elaborate on that. Where you're just together as families, talking your issues and the plans and the agendas you have as family that will still influence the kingdom of God. Family altar. Where we pray together, either in the morning or in the evening, before we sleep, before we wake up early in the morning, we pray together. Because that is the game changer in your family. A family that prays together does what? Stays together. You know, there are people, they come to, ch to church together, but they don't pray together. It's a very serious thing. Church, they will come together, but wakatu wakuomba, People go to sleep at their own time. Nobody cares if they are prayed or they are not prayed. I'm here to encourage you, child of God. Family time, family altar is very, very important. Somebody say amen. Parents, please model Christ's way by the way of your life. Our children are looking upon us. Parents who are here, married couples who are here, single parents who are here. How do you model that Christ way of life in your life? When you are talking to your husband as a wife in front of your children, how do you talk to your husband? Do you know that you're talking to the leader of that house? Or you don't care what you say to your husband, even in front of your children, or even in front of your relatives? Husbands, when you are talking to your wives, or even to your children, how do you talk to them? Because that modeling is very, very important. And when we get the mind of God, God is going to bless us. Somebody say amen. Promoting the raising and training of the next generation by the way you interact with and raise children. Very, very important. In the morning, I use the illustration of my daughter. My firstborn now is 20, 21 years old. She's doing her third year. And I thank God for them. And uh, two weeks ago, my daughter wrote us with my wife a letter, a very long letter. The letter was for thanking us. She was saying, Daddy and Mom, I love the way you are raising us in the fear of the Lord. And we really cherish you as parents. And then he brought the issue of but in the story. Then he said, Daddy and Mom, but I have an issue that I want to square with you. This is more personal. Now I'm 21 years old, but probably you missed telling me this. I'm now grown up, and I'm in college, and I'm a crash na mwana mwana ndugu flani. I'm a crash. Mwana joko crash waze? Mwana joko crash. So she told me, I've crashed with a, with a, with a young man in the, in the university. We don't talk. I've had a crash. We don't talk. We don't do anything, but to kimona, roi naruka, pap. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. Yani, 
I was very happy with my daughter. I told her, daughter, thank you for sharing that. Not many young people can talk to their parents and tell them, I've had a crush. They will crash until they crash on the other side. And that is very serious. What I'm saying, promote the raising and training of the next generation by the way you interact and raise your children. Somebody say amen. Because that is very, very important. Discipline and require obedience from your children as much as possible. Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish him with the rod, he will not die. Punish him with the rod and save his soul from death. It's a blessing. Parents who are here. I know in school nowadays we don't punish our children. But as a parent, you have a responsibility from the Bible to discipline your child. Don't allow your child just to be doing whatever he or she wants to do. You have a mandate as a parent to make sure that you raise this child in a way that will bring glory to the name of the Father. And when this happens, it becomes so powerful. Number seven, encourage and advocate for respect and honor of parents and the elderly by your own example. When I was growing, because I'm now also growing of age, during our days, I know things are changing. You couldn't see an elderly person passing and you just seated there. You'll stand up. That was a very good culture. Squeeze it. Jamaa wajali wakua tukua simu zao hizo. Wano ongea na jamaa hako na shuguli zake. It's a very serious thing. But it depends with how we are raising our children. There are some homes you can go. Visitors are there. Mtoto anaruka kwa ile mesa, anaruka kwa ikiti. You wonder what is happening. It's a serious thing. That tells us the raising has some problem. We need to help our children to respect and to honor parents and elderly people. Because when we do it well, we will be blessed of the Lord. Somebody say amen. That when you are handling something, already your children know that I need to be polite here. I need to do this thing like this here. Because already you have raised him or her in a way that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Avoid alcohol and drugs. Avoid alcohol and drugs. I beseech men who are here. I beseech ladies who are here. Maybe you are still struggling with alcohol and drugs. If you want your family, your marriage to stand, please avoid alcohol and drugs. Because they are going to kill your family. They are going to finish your family completely. I know people who are educated, they have PhDs. People who have money, you talk of money. But because they have accepted this, the family is at turmoil. How I pray that God will help us, children of God, that we pray for our people to avoid alcohol and drugs. Maybe you are here, you are struggling. With beer, you are struggling with smoking, you are struggling with bangi. I want to beseech you, just trust God and allow this thing to leave you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Do not put unnecessary pressure and expectation on the singles. We have singles here. And I know sometimes we want to put a lot of pressure on them. They are singles. You are married if you are married. Allow them to live their life but teach them the right things and tell them what needs to be done in the right way to the glory and honor of God. Choose and commit to live a life of purity. This should be our desire that we commit ourselves to a life of purity wherever we find ourselves. In our business dealings, we choose to live a life of purity. In our political endeavors, we choose to live a life of purity. In our discussions and our talks, we choose to live a life of purity. And when we do this, God is going to bless us. Somebody say, Amen. Husbands and wives should live in oneness, not halfness, not quarterness. They should live in what? Oneness. That is the desire of God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's fault because of your love. Even when things are not working, just have that allowance. Say, because of love, my husband or my child, I forgive you. It is something so powerful. And second, lastly, husband, love and help your wife. We'll talk this one day when we call for married couples retreat. How we can love and help our wives. 
at least now, you know, to be in a marriage for 21 years, I'm a bit experienced, sinio? Naweza kusema mbili tatu hivi na watu wabarikiwe. How we can help and love our wives. Because that will also help us extend the kingdom agenda in the season we are living in. Husbands and wives should satisfy each other's sexual needs according to God's design. We'll also talk on this when that time comes in the name of Jesus. Lastly, pray for families. Can we say pray for families? I'm not hearing from this side. Say pray for families. There's nothing as powerful as prayer. If we are going to experience God's breakthrough in the things that we are doing, I want to encourage you children of God, don't take prayer lightly. Pray for families. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your children. Pray for your parents. Pray for your bosses in the place of work. Pray, pray, pray. And when you pray, things will never be the same again. Somebody say amen. To Timothy, my true son in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord. Let's stand up as we pray together in the name of Jesus. What is your family known for? Is it something that contributes to the growth of the kingdom of God? God is looking for marriages and families that can be used to establish the kingdom of God agenda here on earth. It is not led child of God. You can start from somewhere and say, God, I want to start from here. I want to make my family, I want to make my marriage be that agent of change in my generation. And when we do that, God is going to bless us together. Let's bow our heads even as we pray together in Jesus' name.